They should not make kids this young have to learn this this much stuff. And even though this isn't necessarily the hardest test for someone who's graduated college, ridiculous amount of respect for being able to do this. So in some of my previous videos, my Anime Doro video and my MIT Orgo exam video, a lot of people commented things like, oh, Indian kids have to study 15 hours a day for the JEE, or things like, oh, Indian kids learn this in grade 11, right? So after I heard this, I was like, what the heck is the JEE? So I decided to take a look into it myself. Now, I'm currently a US medical student, so I've taken my fair share of tricky exams. So I want to see if this is one of those situations where it's like an Asian parent bragging about how much their son studies, or if this is actually the real deal, and actually a very difficult exam. Now, the JEE is the Indian Engineering Entrance Exam, and it stands for Joint Entrance Exam. From what I hear, there are two tests, the JEE Main and the JEE Advanced. So if you score high enough on the JEE Main, around the 99th percentile or so, you get to take the JEE Advanced. And if you score high enough on the JEE Advanced, you can qualify to get into schools like IIT, which is equivalent to the MIT of the U. Which is equivalent to the MIT of India. Now the JEE main is split into three sections and two separate papers. So the three sections are math, physics, and chemistry. And then there are two papers. Each of these papers are three hours long, meaning you get a little bit over two minutes per question. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the JEE Advanced, just trying to do some of it, looking over some of the problems and hopefully showing you guys some of it, and just giving my general thoughts on how difficult I think this exam actually is. I'm not actually going to be taking the whole thing because first of all, it's six hours long and I don't have that much time on my hands. But next of all, because I'm a little bit rusty on some of these topics, I just want to compare it to the difficulty of what I know a US test is like and see if this is just if this just completely blows it out of the water or if it's a little bit over overrated. Now first off we're going to start with the math section and with the math section you could already see that this test isn't necessarily impossible, it's just very tricky. You're being tested on a very wide range of math from Algebra 2 all the way up to Calculus and a little bit of Statistics as well. But they're testing you a little way further than just surface level on these topics. Like for example here, it just wants you to see that you know how to calculate the roots of a polynomial and then you just do some simple but annoying multiplication. But these roots, but solving for these roots won't actually give you whole numbers. So that's something that you can already tell the test is trying to be a little bit tricky about. Like question number two is not too bad. Question number three, also just a calculus problem. And especially when I saw this question number six, it was pretty interesting. I'll include the answer key. I'll actually show you guys the answer key on the right side. It has a very, very logical and like reasonable way to go about solving it. It's just step by step, right? But the thing is, there are a lot of very specific steps involved that just so many of these little things that like, when it comes to crunch time, like you might think of it, you might not think of it. And that's what makes this problem so hard because even though it's just an optimization problem, there are so many simple, like sort of niche steps that you have to take in order to get this problem right. And something like question number eight that requires you to have an understanding of matrices. In high school math in the United States, even if you go up to calculus, you probably won't see something like this. So this is an example of the JEE just having a very large scope of things that you need to know. Like, honestly, some of this stuff, I, I feel like you, there's no need for you to know it in high school, but that's, that's beyond me. And then as you go further on the test, especially when I got to like, Section number three, like this thing. Wow. Look at how disgusting this looks. Look at how long and disgusting this problem is. I'm gonna put the answer key up. This solution is probably also very long, tricky, confusing, and disgusting. Oh, this is this is tricky, man. I, w I wouldn't even attempt that. I wouldn't even attempt this type of problem because to be frank, it's quite difficult. I, I would say that most of these problems on page, on section three are just, quite difficult for someone 
who doesn't have a very, very, very strong grasp on math. And I took calculus in in high school. I took and I took calculus one, calculus two in college, right? But but section number three really requires you to have a little bit more of an understanding of math and some of the trickier topics that people normally like to just glaze over or when they test you on like will test you on easier problems. So I'm going to say that section number one and two difficulty level I'll say in terms of concepts is pretty simple. In terms of the actual questions maybe a six and a half out of ten but section three the concepts are pretty tricky and the actual difficulty I might give a nine out of ten. Now, moving on to physics, I also haven't taken physics in a couple years, but straight off the bat, I can see that it tests you on probably even a deeper level than a lot of college physics classes will test you on. Here, like this type of problem that's not straight straight up just a ball laying on a curve, but actually has a little, is actually indented a little bit into this plank, is a much trickier problem than just a ball on a plank. But you can also see that there's a mix of very doable questions along these like harder questions like question number two is not a very tricky question nor is question number three and when you move on and see more of the test you'll see that a lot of these questions they mix in like simpler questions like question number five with more tricky questions especially question number six is something that you'll see a lot on like u.s college level physics tests and it's a pretty standard problem. And you can you can definitely see that the JEE physics has quite a broad scope. You can see some of this like like thermal physics right over here that goes over things like radiation. You can see here that there's like a little bit of quantum physics. What it, that's what it looks like. Like these aren't some of these topics you don't touch on very closely in high school and like you have to wait till you get a little deeper into college to do this like even even question number 10 a, a pattern that I'm starting to see a lot is that on the JEE they don't necessarily test you on the hardest concepts they just test you on trickier versions of the simpler concept that's a very apparent thing with question number 10 I think that even on a college level physics exam, they, they probably wouldn't test you on this unless they wanted to be mean. Same with 11. Same with 12. Actually, this isn't a topic that I'm all that familiar with. Yeah, you can see here that a lot of these problems, once again, not the trickiest concepts. They are topics that you learn how to do when you're taking something like AP Physics in high school, but it's very likely that when you're actually testing on this, they will give you easier versions of these problems than they do here. Except on the JEE, they actually test you in depth on the trickier versions of these problems, which is what makes this exam just so difficult. If I were to rate this test, I would, the physics section, Difficulty, yes, I would give it also a 9 out of 10. Not because it's topics that you've never seen or it's like impossible to do, but it actually requires you to have a very strong grasp on these concepts in order to do it. It's not just like a one, a lot of these problems aren't just one or two step simple problems or like your standard like physics problems. They're variations on your standard physics problems which make them much more difficult. Now, moving on to the chemistry section, the first thing I noticed was that, first of all, I didn't we didn't necessarily learn all that much about the topics that we went over, the topics that question number one covers, right? But this is an example of how, I guess, a lot of the JE is also just test taking skills. If you know that the most probable and the average speeds are in a one to one ratio, and that almost right off the bat eliminates A, C, and D, giving B to be the correct answer, which is not too tricky. I think. From what, from if you look at this, like this is uh, writing out a chemical equation, this is uh, identifying precipitates and what's soluble and what's insoluble. So far, the chemistry is not very tricky at all. This is actually like AP chemistry level and stuff. So technically, first and second year college stuff, but there are some kids that learned this in high school. 
However, something like question number four, question number five, straight off the bat, this is organic chemistry. Like even for a college organic chemistry course, some of these new projections aren't even the simplest. They're not even the most standard ones, which show you shows you that even if these tests test simple topics, they on the JE they like to give you complex versions of these simple topics. For example, here this new projection. I'll just draw it like this. A lot of people wouldn't be able to see it straight off the bat. I think that this one is trying. Like I definitely know people that would have struggled a lot to to draw out these new projections, without a doubt. But yeah, like you can see that the JE is testing you on a lot of organic chemistry. So now I actually participated in Chemistry Olympiad in my time in high school, right? And a lot of kids were really good at doing inorganic and physical chemistry, right? Which is what some of the first page tested you on, but didn't really have a lot of knowledge of organic chemistry just because in high school in the United States, they don't really teach you organic chemistry. So while this is, these aren't the most tricky chemistry problems, a US chemistry student would definitely not be able to do this just because of the scope. The scope is much wider than in a US class. I think, in my opinion, the chemistry section is without a doubt the easiest section on this test. And I think that aside from the organic chemistry, which a college level organic chemistry student would be able to do without much difficulty, the so yeah, in conclusion, I think if you took away all the organic chemistry problems in this test, the difficulty might be like a 5.5 out of 10. Very typical for what an AP chemistry student would see, but because the AP chemistry is included, and that just includes a huge scope of things that like, you probably would have never learned in high school, the difficulty is probably a nine. Okay, so here are my conclusions. So for all those kids in the comments who are like, oh, Indian kids study 15 hours a day for the JEE. <laughs> Bro, 15 hours is not enough, man. You probably gotta have to do 20 hours a day, 25, 30 hours a day in order to pass this in high school. Because the thing is, what I noticed, the scope of this exam is just crazy. Like, you're learning across the board, across math, chemistry, and physics, things that sophomore level, a second year in college students would be learning in the US and actually probably across most countries, right? And the thing is, you can't just have like a basic understanding of these things to do well on, these, on the exam. You actually have to have a very deep understanding of these topics in order to do well on something like the test that I just showed you, right? Because the thing is, what I notice is that they don't test you on the most advanced topics, right? I've taken courses that are quite a bit more advanced than some of these topics, but they, but even these advanced topics, they'll, if you're in college, they might test you on some of the easier problems that go along with the advanced topics. No, they test you on like the medium advanced topics on the JEE, but they'll give you the hardest questions in the problem set, and that is, I would rather take the advanced topics with the easier questions than the, than the, medium advanced topics with the hardest questions any day because those questions are just tricky for, for anyone but kids that, that young that's that's ridiculous man so i'm just gonna say mad respect to all the kids out there who have to take the jee and my full full support mad respect like i'm just gonna say that if when i was in high school there was no the, maybe with some training i could do better than I would have done without training. <laughs> well, actually, obviously that was a dumb statement. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't have passed this test. I wouldn't have done well enough on this test to go to the IITs of India. I would have done way worse. I. I think even across the United States, there is probably only a handful of students, a small handful of students, less than a couple hundred students, right, that can do very, very well in high school on all three of these sections. I think that. There are probably a couple thousand students out there that can do well on individual sections 
as they come. Maybe you do really well in physics or do really well in chemistry or do really well in math. But because the scope is so wide, I think there's only a small number of high school students in the U.S. that can do uh, that can do well on all three of those sections. And actually, but but those students are actually the top of the top, the most gifted kids in the U.S. I think most students wouldn't even be able to get like four or five of those questions right. They they would struggle too much. And I think compared to a test like the SAT, some people like to say the SAT is a joke. And as a U.S. student, obviously I don't like hearing that, right? Because I had to study very hard for it. But yes, compared to this test, the SAT is an absolute joke. It's an absolute joke. The math is not even comparable to something like this, okay? And even the MCAT, the MCAT is, is an example of a test that tests you on maybe slightly more advanced topics, right? But tests you on the easy questions. The, like, the questions on this are much trickier than the MCAT, even though the level might be a little bit lower. And like, that is without a doubt. And the physics section on this, 100 times harder than even the physics section on the MCAT. So once again, I will just say, after taking a look at the JEE, my conclusion is that this is the real deal. This is probably one of the hardest, hands down the hardest level high school exam I've ever seen. And once again, mad respects to all the kids out there grinding for the JEE, and I wish you guys all the best. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see. And remember, when you do anime duo for a test like this, this is how you get to IIT.